Um, so Mukta, I would like you to just briefly introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about what you're doing now in Nigeria and also um, give us a bit of a background. Hi, thank you, Emilio, for the introduction. My name is Mukta Gedenya. I'm a public health physician and uh, I'm a co-director at the IC Consulting. And at the moment in Nigeria, I support the implementation of IC consultancies and collaborations with aligned organizations, uh, organizations working on gender, uh, inclusivity, equity, and mainstreaming. In addition to that, I also teach at the University in Kano, Bayer University, where I'm an associate professor. Uh, in Nigeria, I, I get engaged in supporting and working with partners and government. For example, recently, I'm only recuperating, or I can say recovering from uh, a 20 days engagement with national partners and the Federal Ministry of Health in the joint annual review of the National Strategic Health Development Plan, which is an overarching plan for the Nigeria's health sector, multi-year overarching plan, uh, which we reviewed for its implementation in 2018 and 2019. Like I said, for IC, I collaborate, uh, I coordinate uh, implementation and collaboration of researches in Nigeria. Only recently, uh, we are able to want a bit with RAPA, an organization centered on girl child and gender uh, inclusiveness regarding how COVID has disrupted girl child education uh, obliterating to schools as a result of lockdowns and potentially making girls more vulnerable to uh, abuse, more vulnerable to poor access to educational opportunities, especially for uh, girls in lower income groups, rural areas where alternate access to educational opportunities like online education may not be as readily available as maybe before in higher income quintiles. So uh, as a researcher, individual, I've authored over 42 peer reviewed publications and I was in Nigeria principal investigator for five and and the UNICEF. And recently I'm leading the Nigeria's arm of IC collaboration with RAPA, which like I said earlier is an organization with inclusivity for education on cross-sectional issues like income generation, like uh, occupational and employment opportunities. Thank you so much, Mukta. And, um, but I mean, I think you're being very humble. You are not talking about the two caps you wear because you're also an associate professor at Bayer University, right? But you do some teaching um, and also some coordination. You're the head of the community health department. Yes, at the moment, uh, in addition to my role at IC, I'm an associate professor at the Bayero University in Kano, uh, and I head the department of community medicine for both the university and the teaching hospital in Kano, uh, coordinating the teaching and the research and the community engagement activities. We have over 200 undergraduate medical students uh, that is in the clinical section. In addition to postgraduate medical residents being trained for the fellowship of the National and the West African Postgraduate Medical College. In the current ongoing exam at the West African Postgraduate Medical College, we have six candidates who are going to qualify, hopefully, as fellows in the next few days. And then we do a wealth of 
research, uh, supporting the teaching hospital of the university in reviewing morbidity and mortality data, and then engaging with government at all times from the local to the state to the federal government in conducting community oriented research and then in knowledge translation, not only conducting the research, but then in knowledge translation, synthesis of evidence and uh, other collaborations which foster uh, health for the people in Nigeria and especially in Kano State and potentially for the region. Fantastic. And of course, in addition to this, you're also a father. And um, how many children do you have? And a very dedicated one. I, I happen to know that you don't like to spend time away from your family as well. Thank you. An important uh, element for me, yeah. uh, a role I cherish very well, my primary role, uh, in fact. I have three kids. My eldest daughter, Maria, is 11, and, it, and is in the first year in secondary school. And uh, the youngest daughter is only seven months. So uh, a lot of time I need to juggle between my work at IC, my work at the university, and the very important role I need to serve for the three kids, including the boy who fills all the house uh, is actually uh, ladies. <laughs> There are only two men in the house, so uh, he wants to bond uh, as much as he can uh, and, with. No, 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 continue, please. He wants the boy who is six years old, wants yes. to bond as much as he can with the only man in the house. Of course. Once, with the lockdown, he wants to follow me to work, <laughs> which uh, as a hospital, we, uh, as a university and a teaching hospital, we still operate, yeah. which means for him, the COVID uh, protocol has not been aware of what to do. So that uh, delicate role, supporting my wife too, who uh, is an academic, and then uh, is doing her terminal degree. Yeah. And then we need to juggle, and it doesn't help actually if you bring in mates and nannies, because they to the mates and the nannies, you have to do managerial role. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I see we've lost you for a bit. Your video is frozen. Um, for how they walk. Yeah, of course. And a lot of uh, a lot of uh, work, but uh, a, a pleasant one. Being able to uh, manage the home setting, and then being yeah. able to manage the work, uh, the IC and the university work. But then people ask me, uh, how do I balance the family? Yeah, that's, that's why I was going to ask you component. because I was actually curious because you usually find people who have to choose one. So you, um, you have to either choose being present with your family or being a successful academic and um, practitioner. But you seem to be doing both quite well very well, in my opinion. So it's really curious. So what's your secret to work-life balance? So I tend to uh, create niches for what I do. When I come to work and it's 8 a.m., I arrive at the work, I concentrate on the work I, I'm doing with uh, intervals on which I check on what is happening at home. And I, I work very intensively for the time I, I'm at work except for the occasional time. And it's not, it's very occasional time. I tend to check on how the kids are doing. And it's one of the great uh, breaks I have when I'm at work. Occasionally take an hour, go to my kids' school, see how they are doing on the days that they are open days. Or for the period of COVID now, uh, be able to call the kids on the home line, see how they are going with the online courses what challenges they have had and what successes they have made. And then when I close at, uh, in the early hours of afternoon or in the late hours of afternoon or early hours of the evening, then when I go home, I tend to have this magical switch into being a fully a full family man, needing to get permission from the kids, 
especially the boy who is bonding with me. And the girls too are bonding with me, but the boy mm-hmm. feels uh, he should be role modeling me more than the girls. He need to take the permission. And so when I need to Skype late hours or when I need to be on a Zoom call, a lot of uh, the disruptions <laughs> you can hear. Yeah. The kids shouting. I have sympathetic co-workers at IC and some other collaborations who realize that you are filling these multiple roles and then you need to do a good work at all of the roles. No. And then they understand you as you deliver uh, on all the several roles you are serving as a father, as a co-director and as an associate professor at the university. And by the way, I'm happy that things are going uh, as nicely as, as I should hope for uh, all the roles I'm playing. And I hope it remains so for uh, the, the long conceivable time to come in the future. No, and I, and I think it's also, it's also very important because um, uh, a good life is not just Sussex or being successful in one component of your life. It's being able to have love around you and family and also do well in your career. So I think you serve as a role model for a lot of people as well, being able, first of all, thinking all these areas and components of your life are important and being very firm about creating a niche for them. And um, just not to take up too much of your time, I just have one more question because you've had a very interesting background. I happen to know personally that you thought about living in the US for your PhD. You have a master's from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And what tends to happen is people tend to want to stay um, in countries like the UK or the US, but you were very practical about coming back and contributing um, to Nigeria and also uh, maintaining these international collaborations. Do you, so do you have a few words of advice for young people who are considering taking this path and are, and are struggling with the conflict of either um, staying overseas or going back, working on, in Nigeria, working in a developing country? Um, some of these issues that everyone faces, what would you advise them? Or what would you say to your younger self if you were 20 years younger? Yeah. Mukta, we seem to have, Mukta? Can I talk in five minutes? Can yeah, can you hear me? Did you hear the question? Um, okay. Oh, the video is frozen, so I'm just gonna wait a bit till you're back. Are you back now? Okay, oh, yeah. great, great. Did you? No, no. I my question was really about. Um, I find I know that, for example, from our conversations that you. We're doing a PhD in the US and that you also have a master's from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in London, but you decided to come back to Nigeria and be closer with your family and be on ground to contribute to the society. So I think this is a conflict a lot of young people working in health and development have, especially when you're from a, a, a low middle income country. Um, the conflict about going back and to contribute or staying where you studied and I, I just want to say, what, what few words of advice would you have for your younger self if you were 20 years younger, or if you were talking to a young professional who's considering some of these? And uh, my advice is based on what I have done and what I have chosen for myself. I had yeah. from the, a clear uh, perception, a clear goal about what I, I want to do. I want to be based... Uh, in Nigeria, I give them back to the society that has done considerably much for me, been close to my uh, family relatives and parents, and then still not missing on the international area. I've been able to contribute and collaborate internationally as I'm doing. And I find this uh, very satisfying to be able to uh, participate locally, regionally, and and internationally. So I had this uh, goal and concept from 
when I was very young, I was in the final or penultimate year in the medical school. That I'm going to work largely in Africa and in Nigeria. And then I'm not going to miss out. And Africa and Nigeria are not going to miss out on the international collaborations I can enjoy, the knowledge, uh, hybridization I can engage in, what I'm able to in real time. It's actually a real time be able to give back to my institutions and my community by being intimately collaborating with international organizations, international firms as I see uh, international educational institutions like the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and some of the foremost research and service organizations in Europe and in the United States. So I had this broad concept of getting the best uh, of the tools uh, to variable composition, be largely in Nigeria, uh, in Africa, then still being able to work internationally as I do, collaborate internationally in researches, in service delivery, and then still be able to uh, get the best of the tool, not only for my own sake, for the sake of uh, my institutions and for my country and, and the region generally. Oh. Thank you so much, Mukta. And I have to say, um, from over here, like from my point of view, I think you are um, you are getting the best of both worlds, and you're also contributing the best um, different fields you're working. Thank you so much for the, no, so of course, much. no. Thank you, thank you for your time. And um, I, I found this interview very inspiring, and you've you've really shared some key key tidbits on how to be successful. First of all apparently prioritizing and also uh, that it's possible to have a work-life balance and it's also possible to contribute to your society and have the international collaborations most of us desire. So I'm going to thank you for your time now. Um, I'm looking forward to more conversations and thank you. And thank you, Emil. Omo, have a good day. Yeah. The coordination you are doing and for all the great work you coordinate at IC and some other fora. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.